Mark Rogers TV, we're rating the conferences. Thanks so much for hanging with us as we've made it all the way through each Power 5 conference. We've looked at the results. We've measured each and every result based on the seeding of that particular team in that conference against a like-seeded team in the other conferences. Check out the other videos as we march through the SEC, the ACC, the Big Ten, the Big 12, and the Pac-12. And now we have our final numbers. So we are putting the wins and losses into context. So we can only really measure these conferences by looking at the results, the wins and the losses, against each other. Once the SEC plays games against the SEC, how can we possibly measure the SEC against the other conferences and likewise uh, the other four major conferences? we got to look at the games that they played against each other. It's not near enough. They should be playing more regular season games against each other, but they pretty much doubled the regular season games during the bowl season. So these are both postseason and regular season games. So let's look at them right here. So the top line is the sheer record of that conference against the other four major conferences. So for the Pac-12, they're off and running at 13 and 6. So face value, the Pac-12 was by far the best conference at 13 and 6. We listed them by record. So the Big Ten was the only other above 500 conference against the other four major conferences at 14 and 13, the SEC 11 and 11, ACC 12 and 14, Big 12 6 and 12. But again, let's put it into context. For example, the SEC on the final weekend of the regular season lost four consecutive games to the ACC. Only one of those games was a comparable seeded matchup, Georgia, Georgia Tech. Yellow Jackets, a number two seed out of the ACC. The Bulldogs, a number four out of the SEC. The others were not even close. Clemson, the number three seed out of the ACC, defeating South Carolina, a number 10 seed out of the SEC, for example. That's why we have to put it into context. So the next line, you see the winning percentage of those teams out of that conference within conference play. So in the 19 games that the Pac-12 played against the other four major conferences, their winning percentage in conference was 602. The reason we take the in-conference winning percentage is because the out-of-conference winning percentage is all over the place based on competition. We know that that's a fixed set of opponents within the Pac-12. That measures how good those teams played within their own conference. So the Pac-12 won 60% of its games. Uh, in those 19 against itself. The Big Ten, 57%. The SEC, 58%. 60% for the ACC. And just under 55% for the Big 12. So if you took all the games played within any conference, of course, regardless of how good the conference is, they win 50% because they're playing each other. Everybody wins the game and loses the game. The reason these are all above 50%, of course, is because typically the better teams in each conference play more Power 5 conference opponents, if you check out the Wake Forest of the world, for example, they didn't play any Power 5 conference games. Number one, that's the reason why the regular season scheduling typically tougher for the better teams. They typically uh, schedule better games, i.e. Oregon taking on Michigan State. Number two, the big reason why is because the better teams go to postseason play and play in the Bulls. The bottom two and three and four teams in each conference didn't go to postseason play so that they didn't measure into that uh, percentage there. The second line is the winning percentage of their opponents in conference. So in those 19 games for the Pac-12, teams that won 60% of their games in the Pac-12 defeated teams that won 59% of their games in their conferences. In the Big Ten, the SEC, the ACC, and the Big 12. And again, check out the individual conference videos to understand that a little bit better. So what this tells us right here is that the SEC teams that won 58% of their games inside the SEC went 11-11 11 and 11 outside their conference, but they took on very good teams for the other conferences at 63.5%. Inversely, the Big Ten at 57% took on a little bit weaker teams outside of the Big Ten at 53%. You see the ACC, 60% uh, to 56%. The Big 12, yeah, the 6-12 and 12 does not look good for the Big 12, but they took on better teams outside of the Big 12, uh, winning almost 60% of their games. 
All right, this next number here, the next two numbers, we explain this in the other videos. So for every game won and lost, let's say, let's take the national championship game. Ohio State defeats Oregon. We start with 10 points for the winner, negative 10 for the losing conference. So for Ohio State in the Big Ten, they get 10 points right off the bat. Oregon and the Pac-12 loses 10 points. Okay. The only reason that has ever changed is because of the seeding difference. In that case, the national championship game, Ohio State the one seed, Oregon the one seed, like seeded game, so that doesn't change. Big 10 plus 10, Pac-12 minus 10. Let's take another case in point. Let's take an extreme case. Indiana out of the Big Ten defeats Missouri. So Indiana, the 13 seed out of the Big Ten, defeats the number two seed out of the SEC, Mizzou. So for the Big Ten, they get the plus 10, but then they also get the 11 seeded difference. So they get a plus 21, the SEC gets a negative 21, and so forth and so on. That's the most extreme case. Uh, take, for example, Alabama defeats West Virginia. Alabama, the one seed in the SEC. West Virginia, the six seed out of the Big 12. So it was a five seed difference. So uh, 10 points for the SEC minus the five because Alabama, a one seed, should defeat West Virginia, a six seed. So the SEC just given five points and the Big 12 just loses five points, not the full 10 because, again, the seeded difference. And because we've got 14 teams in three of these leagues and we've got 12 in one and we've got 10 in the Big 12, we adjusted the seedings uh, to make this a fair fight. So that's the average win value. So for the Pac-12, it's plus eight and a half. For the Big Ten, it's a strong 10.1. For the SEC, it's a very good 10.8. For the ACC, this means that the ACC higher seeds defeated lower seeds out of other conferences. So it's only 6.4. This 10.8, again, if like seeds were always playing, these numbers would be 10. 10.0 across the board. That means the SEC and the Big Ten played uh, difficult games and won difficult games outside of conference. I'm sure Ohio State defeating Alabama and Oregon did not hurt that number right there. And again, that Indiana win over Missouri. The ACC 6.4, the Big 12 with a strong number at 9.7. This measures the quality of loss. So again, if you're losing to a like-seeded team, you lose 10 points. But if you're losing a game that's understandable, one of the worst teams, let's say in the SEC, let's say a Tennessee, not one of the worst in the SEC, but a, a 10 seed, I believe uh, we had them factored in in the SEC, loses to Oklahoma, one of the top teams in the Big 12. Well, if that's a 4 for 10 matchup, then the SEC is only losing 4 points. So that's just a negative 4 for the SEC and just a plus 4 for the Big 12 because uh, one of the higher seeded teams in the Big 12 should defeat one of the lower seeds in the SEC. So the SEC shows, if you would see, and we showed it in the SEC video, SEC teams faced uh, those 11 losing games, but the, the 11 teams that they faced went 111 in 37. They were seeded an average of 3.7 in their league. So they were highly seeded teams. Therefore, the SEC loss factor is is pretty respectable at negative 7.5. Not so much the Big Ten, uh, negative 9.8, the Pac-12 at 9.2. Uh, the ACC and the Big 12 did fairly well in losing games that we would consider understandable losses. Uh, Lower-seeded ACC and Big 12 teams losing to higher-seeded teams from other conferences. So we had to multiply, since those are averages per game, per wins and losses. So yes, the SEC did well considering they faced strong opposition, but they only went 11 and 11. So how would that shake out? Was it enough to overcome the 500 record? Well, not quite. The Pac-12 played better than anybody because they did perform well. Uh, their opponents were very comparable, 60% to 59% winning percentage, and we see the numbers here. So they, they faced like competition, but they went 13-6. and six. So the Pac-12 went out and won the games. We would have loved to have seen, especially when we shake out these numbers, the Pac-12 and the SEC to have played at least one football game this season. That's ridiculous that a college football season goes by that two great leagues, the SEC and the Pac-12, did not play one lousy game against one another. That should not happen. 
We'll talk formula scheduling a little bit later in this offseason because that has to happen. We need formula scheduling. We can't have these teams running amok and serving their own agendas and scheduling games. This is how it turned out for 2014. I'm not saying that the Pac-12 is the best conference in college football. What I am saying based on these results is that the Pac-12 played the best football of any conference in America in 2014 outside of conference. Because, again, you can't measure the games inside the conference. Everybody goes 500. Outside of conference, the Pac-12 was the best. A plus 55.3. So that was uh, resulted in taking the wins minus the losses. 8.5 times 13 minus 9.2 times 6. Plus 55.3 for the Pac-12. Plus 36.3, the SEC in second place. The Big Ten off the strength of a nice postseason and big wins over uh, Baylor and Auburn and, of course, Oregon and Alabama finishes with a plus 14. Then you drop off to the ACC, a negative 33.8. The record wasn't horrible at uh, 12-14, and but weak wins. No really great wins for the ACC where down uh, teams in the rankings in the ACC really defeated top teams. Uh, Georgia Tech really bailed them out with some nice wins out of conference over Georgia and Mississippi State, but still a negative 33.8 for the ACC and the Big 12. Just couldn't overcome the sheer uh, results of just losing 12 out of 18 games. So the Big 12, the quality was there in regards to opponents. They just didn't win any games. What good games did the Big 12 win out of conference? TCU defeated Minnesota. That was one of the better wins. Baylor didn't beat anybody. And, of course, TCU defeated Ole Miss. Those are probably the two best wins for the Big 12 out of conference. And actually, Iowa State helped out a lot as a last seed, lowest seed in the Big 12, defeating Iowa, the seventh seed out of the Big 10. So there it is. You can argue it, but the numbers don't lie. And if you cross-check this, it makes a whole lot of sense going every which way. No, this does not take into account um, Power 5 conference teams losing bad, bad games against, let's say, a MAC team or even uh, respectable games against the American Athletic Conference. Uh, For example, a Florida or a South Carolina defeating East Carolina. But this is a closed experiment against the major independents and most specifically against the Power Five. Need to hear from you. Would love for you to debate this one. Let's talk it over right here on Mark Rogers TV.